in today's lecture, we will look at how we perturb metabolic networks, particularly how do we overexpress genes and measure the effect of this overexpression and also how do we identify interesting overexpression targets for metabolic engineering using this method called FSEOF, it stands for flux scanning using enforced objective flux. So, we will now look at overexpression, we did look at deletion, what would be the strategy for overexpressing a gene? Which genes would you overexpress? And typically you are going to be worried about deletion if you want to kill a cell like you know a pathogenic organism and so on and you are going to be worried about overexpression if you want to maximize the production of a metabolite, you want to push more flux through a particular pathway. And um, the other analogy that uh, you know it is uh, often helpful while understanding these kind of systems is that you have a large system of pipes right and with you know there are like a bunch of walls and so on and you have the total flux at the, the final flux that comes out at the bottom right that is like your biomass flux. Now, if you alter all of these the steady state will vary, so these are like perturbations that you can study. And you know this is literally the same thing right, so your uh, each of your reactions is like a pipe that is uh, you know carrying a flux. Okay. So, to come back to over expression, so you would want to over express genes that will improve the productivity in a particular pathway, but it turns out that there is no easy way to do this. So, how would you, over, so first thing is how would you simulate over expression? So, you have to manipulate the bounds right, what happens if you increase the upper bound? It may not make a difference, yeah. but if you increase the lower bound you are pushing it in the direction. So, one way to simulate it would be you solve for your V by your star and you will obtain a value for some V 5, let us say that is the gene you want to over express and now you fix V 5 to twice that value, okay, that would be over expressed and now you simulate what happens. How do you choose that V 5 will come to it, so currently we are saying if I choose to over express a gene, it is like we still. No, um, if you choose to over express V 5, you first get V by O but then the V5 that you get in that vector that has V by O star, you do not like there are technically many solutions, you just take any solution that the solver gives you and then you. Ah, so, you are saying you want to maximize V5 or something or uh, is that what you are trying, you want to do a flux variability for V5, possibly I think that's, that is that is doable too, right. Yeah, so, maybe you can take the max flux through V5 and like double that and force that much flux through V5 and then see what is the impact on biomass, fair enough I think that is one way to look at it. But <coughs> the a very interesting approach was proposed by uh, <coughs> uh, Shoy et al in uh, 2010, they said <coughs> let us study incremental increases in objective flux, let us enforce the objective flux and scan what happens to various reaction fluxes, the idea is very nice. So, <coughs> this is particularly useful if your metabolite is non growth associated. So, you might know that there are some growth associated metabolites and non growth associated metabolites right. So, growth associated metabolites will, will be higher in productivity when uh, higher fluxes whenever the growth rate is higher, but there are like other secondary metabolites which will basically be in opposite directions. The cell can either go in this direction or in this direction right. So, if you go in this direction you will have lesser of product, if you go in this direction you will have lesser of uh, lesser of biomass here, lesser of product here right, for this is uh, typical for several secondary metabolites. So, in these cases what they suggested was very nice, let us always look at the cell trying to maximize its biomass, that is what most cells are always trying to do, well at least whenever you do that you seem to get very good predictions in terms of uh, the uh, growth rates. <coughs> so, now you max V by O, you are able to compute your V by O star right and now you max V lycopene with a you know secondary metabolite of interest let us say you get V lycopene star. Now, you set the V like equals and maximize 
biomass. This will give you some flux distribution, right. Now you say V like equals 0 0.2 and max biomass. You will get a little lesser biomass than in the previous case, maybe you get a distribution of this sort. You do this multiple times, get multiple distributions. Is this simple? This is very clear, right. Now, let us analyze these reactions, right. So, now if you look at individual reactions, you will find that as you increase V lycopene, there are reactions that may go like this, there are reactions that may go like this, there are reactions that may go like this and there could be reactions that go like this. The authors came up with the hypothesis, hypothesis that these are the more interesting reactions. So, as you ask for more lycopene flux, these are the reactions that are carrying more flux and bringing you more lycopene in some sense, right. So, could you over express these reactions. So, when you so the other way to look at this is you have snapshots right let us say of a city where there is some traffic distribution. You find that whenever there is a lot of traffic flowing through some particular area there was also a lot of traffic flowing through some other area know, like correlated right. So, if you widened that road or if you like had more traffic flowing there, then you would end up getting more traffic here right. Well, in the, the road scenario you want lesser traffic whereas, in the cellular scenario you want more traffic, but the idea is kind of analogous right. So, what are the roads if widened will admit more lycopene flux. So, what are the reactions if over expressed will admit more lycopene flux. So, the idea is these are the reactions that kept increasing as you as you increase the lycopene flux. So, I had only <coughs> so let us say here the biomass value was 0 0.6, here the biomass value may have been 0 0.5, here the lycopene value may have been like some 10 what arbitrary units, here it might have been 20 right. But then you have certain reactions that are carrying more flux. So, these might be the reactions that are quite interesting and we have actually had very good success with this in two different systems in both sunflower and lactococcus lactis predictions made using this method which is called FSEOF flux scanning based on enforced FSEOF enforced objective flux. So, you basically enforce an objective flux and maximize only for biomass because that is what the cell is trying to do and you find that there are some reactions which always increase in flux, some reactions which decrease in flux, some reactions that really do not care or do not matter. You are setting lycopene or something, what, what objective flux are we enforcing? Objective flux is biomass maximization. Objective, but we enforce the, well we enforce the product. So, you enforce the product, product objective flux as well. So, you are you also have a project product object. So, you first do a uh, maximize product and get the maximum value of product and then you this is computed with probably 0 biomass. So, if you see biomass is actually 0 here right when you maximized product I mean it, it can be very low values of biomass like nearly 0 right and but I mean in fact it can be 0 biomass right it is it, it is after all a simulation. So, this becomes the objective. So, it will just uh, you can very well have 0 biomass. It, it may be some small amounts of biomass if necessary, but you can very well have 0 biomass. But you can use this experiment. We already discussed that right. So, this is this just tells you what is the theoretical maximum flux that can be carried by the product reaction product forming reaction. So, we did the uh, uh, say that example right. So, if you know that you are already at uh, six, only at 60 percent of that value, 
you don't you really need to invest in metabolic engineering of for that product uh, you know trying to do strain improvement but if you are already at like say 90 95% of this theoretical maximum you don't need to worry about strain improvement you have to look at some other avenue so to repeat you maximize the product come up with a value and then you say i will do a very small amount of product right some 10% of the maximum value and then 20 percent of the maximum value, 40 percent of the maximum value, 60 percent of the maximum value, maximum value of product and I will see how all the reaction fluxes vary when I go from this state to this state to this state to this state to this state. And you see that there are some reactions that monotonically increase, some reactions that keep decreasing and some reactions that remain unchanged. These seem to be the interesting reactions. In fact, it would also be interesting to see what happens when you remove these reactions and so on and in fact um, we have also tried building a bypass from these reactions to these reactions. So, can you try to redirect these these are the fluxes that are taking away your lycopene in some sense taking away something that is important for your product. So, can you reroute them towards this that is an interesting thought it is a project idea. What kind of networks? No, like if you just you have your model, can you use any? Can you do network analysis of centrality? It's tricky. It's tricky. So uh, we we are trying some of those things, but it's uh, uh, typically the fluxes become very important. So static network analysis doesn't uh, loses a bit of sheen when it comes to uh, metabolic engineering. Of course, it's very useful if you want to predict what kind of exchanges can happen between two organisms and so on. So, we are using that kind, those kinds of models for consortia and things like that. So, just to see which reactions correlate positively, if you have a model, is there no like just by looking at a network, can't, is there no analysis to say which It reaction? seems possible, but it just seems hard as well, right? It just seems very reasonable, right, to be able to come up with that, yeah, project idea. So, there are flux coupling definitions. So, there are papers that talk about flux coupling in different reactions and so on right, you know. So, there are like directionally coupled reactions, undirectionally coupled and uh, I mean uh, uncoupled reactions and so on. <coughs> so, basically when A carries a flux, B also carries a flux. When A does not carry a flux, B does not carry a flux. So, that is like proper directionally coupled and so on. So, and sometimes you know this can be non-zero, this can be zero, this can also be non-zero and so on. They are uncorrelated. So, there are different kinds of things, but these have been studied only through flux analysis. But if you see if there is some correlation that can be done with networks, the catch again with networks is um, you, what kind of networks do you use? Substrate graphs are a problem, you may want to use hypergraphs and things like that, right. But this is some this is interesting, you should go and talk to Aarti about this, my PhD student. So she has a very good algorithm that will take care of multiple metabolites in a network and it is based on uh, using the bipartite representation and using some BFS on top of it. So, and one way to evaluate these fluxes would be if you, you can check what is the ratio of this V bio wild type or V bio over expressed by V bio wild type into V product or lycopene over express by V product wild type. You could rank your over expression targets based on this. What is the net improvement in uh, biomass and product? So, we may product became uh, you know say let us say this was 0.3 this became 0.8 and this was 1.0, this became 0.4. This will tell you, you know, how, how good it is overall. It is one measure, you can come up with any other measures, okay. I think we will stop here. So, in this video, I hope you got a good overview of how one goes about performing another kind of perturbation in addition to deletions, which is basically over expression. So, how do you over express a gene or how do you over express a reaction? in some sense in a model. So, we also looked at the technique called FSEOF which tells you which tries to predict 
which genes need to be overexpressed to optimize the production of a given metabolite. In the next video, we look at another interesting type of perturbation namely synthetic lethals.